think it's time to address the elephant in the room. The total stock market collapse is, is coming. This is a drop in the bucket compared to potentially what we could see happen in the stock market. Now, before you guys get anxiety, click off this video, dislike the video, do all of that nonsense. Hear me out here. If you want to make millions or multi-millions become very wealthy, you have to understand these things. If you do not, feel free, dislike the video, click off right now. I, it doesn't even matter. I don't expect this video to do well anyways. But I do hope this video helps some of you guys make some money. And to put all of this into some context, in hopefully a pretty short video, I want to keep it nice and condensed, give you guys all this information. Feel free to watch this video multiple times, save it come back later watch it in a couple months uh, to see how all of this does play out but the writing is definitely on the wall for the total stock market collapse we just had the fed start quantitative tightening the fed is raising rates in a dramatic way growth is slowing down oil is pushing us into a recession uh and multiple other things so we have a lot to talk about we're going to talk about potentially as well how this could be averted but it does not look very likely at this current moment i think there's a less than five percent chance that we could actually avert this market collapse so we're going to dive into all of this key information if you guys find value out of this video hit the like button subscribe to the channel source comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section i would love to hear how you are observing other people acting and behaving is the price of oil affecting what people are doing people that you know right is that having an impact on people yet or is it not quite affecting their lifestyles yet? I know personally, I've seen the price of oil definitely affecting a lot of, of people that I know. So let me know your thoughts on that down below in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching and let's get into it. If you guys want to get free stock, probably the best thing you guys can do right now to get yourself some free money, get yourself some free shares, Weeble, Moomoo, Moo, and Public down below in the description of this video. And if you guys want to come trade with me live in real time, link down below in the pinned comment to do so for that one when this crash inevitably does come you can make a lot of money trading it as well and that is what we plan to do so if you guys want to be a part of it link down below in the pink comment now let's get into the key information here so what does this premise of a stock market collapse really come down to well ultimately the stock market can can trade off of fear and greed for a decent amount of time actually it could trade off of fear and greed for months if not possibly a year, right? Uh, usually doesn't last longer than that. But what the markets ultimately revert back to is fundamentals. They revert back to earnings, right? What affects earnings? Well, a recession affects earnings, long story short, across the board. You have seen multiple companies, inclu including Microsoft, Snapchat, and many more that have recently came out just since the last earnings reports like a month ago and already slashed guidance in a major major way specifically snapchat was a big wake-up call for me because if snapchat is cutting their guidance in that big of a way a month after reporting earnings then their customers their advertisers which also own their own businesses must not be doing so hot right so that's what you guys need to know that's the basic fundamentals of the markets everything over time reverts back to earnings reverts back to fundamentals now, on the other hand of this, what is actually pushing us into a recession? Well, it's not necessarily the Fed. The Fed is not really pushing us into a recession. What is pushing us into a recession is quote unquote inflation. Now, I say quote unquote because it's not, you know, your underwear or or women's underwear or some of these other things that are in the cpi report it's really food and energy now with food and energy inflation fed jerome powell himself has said that they cannot control that they cannot push the price of food or energy down the biggest things that are affecting american families and that is pushing us into a recession at the same time core cpi cpi inflation basically minus food and energy that is core cpi that has went down over the past three months it's gonna continue to go down so that begs the question why is the fed acting ultra aggressive to get interest rates up as fast as possible to shrink the balance sheet as fast as possible well it's simply because 
no matter what happens with inflation, no matter if inflation was 2% or if inflation is 20%, the Fed needs to get interest rates up and they need to reduce their balance sheet and they're doing this at an exponentially faster pace than what they even projected two to three months ago because they're starting to see economic data coming in really really bad aka the odds of a recession and the likelihood of going into a quick recession are going up dramatically so what does that mean well the Fed is basically fighting the clock here to get interest rates, uh, well, get the federal funds rate up essentially as fast as possible. Now, if we go ahead and look at the actual federal funds rate, the last thing in the world you want is to go into recession with rates where they are right now. You just don't want that. We've never went into a recession with interest rates less than 3% right 1957 we had interest rates at three percent went into a recession they dropped them down to almost one percent uh towards the end of the recession really uh like literally the end of the recession which was probably a bad move on their part but usually we're you know around five uh, percent at least before we go into recession right these gray lines are recessions interest rates are a lot higher i should say the federal funds rate is a lot higher heading into a recession what does the fed do they cut rates to accommodate the markets every single time so even back in 2019 that's what happened right so the last thing you want right now is to head into a recession with rates ultra low not being able to accommodate the market so that's a very dangerous game to be playing when the fed has no choice but to raise the federal funds rate, even if we go into recession here in the next, you know, couple of weeks, once we get the GDP report for Q2, we could be in a recession right now. So that's a very dangerous game. That's one reason in and of itself for a stock market collapse. But like I said, what is pushing us into a recession? That is the price of oil. The price of oil has never been this high for so long. I live in Michigan. The price of gas right now is five dollars a gallon i know california is higher than that uh but i mean for the actual amount of money that people make five dollars a gallon for gas is ridiculously high right it's it's affecting people they have a lot less money to spend on other things and the fed can't do anything about that it looks like the price of oil could be high for a very long time the price of food could be high for a very long time so we are going into recession 100 100 there's there's no way around it that's 100 a guarantee that doesn't necessarily mean that earnings have to come down in a huge way to actually cause a stock market collapse now what will do that is a recession plus the fed jacking the interest rates up in a substantial way right and by that i mean the treasury yields and what they're doing right now is they are starting to reduce their balance sheet and like bloomberg says the fed starts experiment of letting 8.9 trillion dollar portfolio shrink experiment because that's exactly what it is we have only done this one other time in history and guess what we did during that time we only reduced the balance sheet by about 30 billion for treasuries per month in 2017 to 2019 and 20 billion for mortgage bonds per month so that was 50 billion total well now the fed's going to be doing about 95 billion dollars of reduction to their balance sheet starting in september they're currently doing about 47 and a half billion dollars of reduction to their balance sheet starting june 1st about three days ago now so what does this do well the fed is technically illiquid they are underwater if the fed was a bank stock it would be a penny stock it would be destined for bankruptcy so the fed also here has no choice but to reduce their balance sheet right now what happened in here when we reduced the balance sheet from four and a half trillion to 3.8 trillion well the stock market dropped 20 percent what was the difference here though 
Well, now we're reducing the balance sheet twice as fast. So you have that. You also have the price of oil at record highs for a record amount of time, which is 100% pushing us into recession. At the same time, you have interest rates climbing through the roof. You have the consumer slowing down in a very dramatic way. So when you put all of this together, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. And it could last years. Let's, let's be honest with ourselves. It could last years. The Fed has no choice but to reduce the balance sheet and to raise rates for a very long time. Very long time. Like, even if we go into recession, then they're not going to stop. The Fed is not going to stop uh, because they just have to get them up and there's no other way to put it. You might be actually looking at 1% rate hikes, uh, possibly, if we do go into recession, just to get them up quick. So, you have all of this working against us. But really, the biggest concern for me is the price of oil. And that's the thing that could ultimately prove this video 100% wrong. If Russia stopped their war in Ukraine and the price of oil dropped down to, let's say, $70, $80 a barrel of oil, that's manageable for a lot of people. That potentially could starve off a stock market collapse. But you got people talking about $150 to $180 barrel of oil. You don't even want to imagine what gas is going to look like if that were to happen. That's where a total stock market collapse actually comes to fruition. Mixing all of this together, you could hit levels like the COVID lows. And pretty scary thing to actually think about what would happen to the real economy, right? Like businesses would go bankrupt. They would be forced to shut down. Now, that's why it's very important for you guys to understand these things before they actually happen so you can start to save money. Maybe, you know, if you don't have the most stable job in the world as well, save a little bit more and then ultimately have a lot of money so you can invest when this ultimate crash does come because you want to be a buyer of assets when it looks like the world is ending and the financial crisis is is here to stay and you know the economy is never going to recover that's the thought process you get during bad times like 2008 you know uh you want to be a net buyer of securities of houses of all of that but it's hard to be if you don't see you know the the writing on the wall before it actually happens right so that is literally it the stock market collapse comes down to the price of food and energy most importantly secondly it is how quick do we go into a technical recession how quick does the consumer actually slow down kind of due to food and energy but also other things at the same time right people hear recession they slow down uh just doing all kinds of things the savings rate goes up so on and so forth you know quantitative tightening how aggressive and how long is that going to last the fed obviously raising rates how high do interest rates go how much demand destruction do you ultimately see and then any other black swan events we get from now and then that is really the cause of uh this coming stock market collapse and it, it, it could get pretty bad now i will say again just for the record this could be averted if Russia just completely stops doing what they're doing. The price of oil falls dramatically. We might avoid a bad recession. That is very, very possible, but it doesn't look like that is likely. And each and every single day that oil remains this high, gas remains this high, food remains this high, uh, it doesn't look so good. So the best things you guys can do right now, save a little bit more money, put a little bit more money to work, but also just make sure you have uh, excess money, excess capital, no matter where it is, right? Credit lines, whatever you got to do to be able to take advantage of those steal of deals once they do come along. And a lot of things even right now are steal of deals. So Take advantage of it. That's what I have for you guys for this video. That's really what you guys need to know. And that's the basics of it. If you guys can un just understand food, energy, quantitative tightening, the Fed raising rates, what that'll do for the overall economy, you will make a lot of money over the next coming years because ultimately, what is the Fed going to do? They're going to cut rates back down to 1%, 2%, right? They're going to cut rates again. Money will become 
cheaper and you want to take full advantage of that once that does happen so thank you guys for watching hopefully this makes you guys some money obviously it won't be tomorrow but over the next call it 6 to 24 months this video should serve you guys very well feel free to save it feel free to watch it a couple times if you guys didn't understand something that was said here in this video but almost equally as important as that make sure to get your free stocks with Weeble, Moomoo, and Public and if you guys want to come trade with me live in real time link down below in the pinned comment thank you guys for watching again enjoy the rest of your weekend and I will see you in the next